Good morning, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. And today, Joanne and I are talking about the kickout clause, what it is, when it's used, why you should know about it, and how to work with it. So Joanne, what is a kickout clause? So a kickout clause is also known as a first right of refusal. And oftentimes the way this is uh, applied in real estate is that you will make an offer on a property, but you have some contingency. Generally speaking, the contingency that's behind the kickout clause is almost always a home sale contingency. And so what that means is, let me set the stage for you. Buyer comes in, makes an offer, home sale contingency, seller evaluates the offer and says, I'm willing to work with the home sale contingency with a kickout clause. So the way the kickout clause functions is that the transaction would proceed with an accepted offer. And in the multiple listing service, there is a special way to mark a property that has a kickout clause. And what that means is that the property can still be shown for sale. So buyers are still going to come in and look at the property. And another buyer could come in and make an offer that is as appealing or more appealing than the offer that's on the table. And then comes the issue of the first right of refusal. So the first right of refusal can be 24 hours, it can be 48 hours, um, depending on the transaction and the type of property, it could be a little longer than that. And basically what the original buyer who has the contingency in place, they will then have 24 or 48 hours or so to release the contingency as part of the transaction. Correct. So Tom, when somebody gets into a transaction and they have an accepted offer on a property and they have a kickout clause in place, what scenarios could happen? So the scenarios that could happen is that now this buyer, let's say the common contingency is for a home sale contingency. Mm -hmm. So that buyer has their home on the market and the market, the house isn't selling. You know, they really, that buyer really has to decide, do I want to buy this house? Because if they do, they might want to get aggressive with selling their home and reduce the price on their property to motivate it to sell. Because what can happen is that buyers may use that home sale contingency at a comfort level or a need level. If it's a comfort level, it's because they just aren't comfortable carrying two mortgages, but they can. Because for a, a seller, oftentimes, where I see a kickout clause most commonly happen is a seller is having trouble selling their home because either they want a certain price or some they have some type of funky can some type of funky like nuance to their house and a buyer comes along and that buyer really wants it but they either have the comfort or need to sell a home so oftentimes we see that price being a little bit higher but you know a seller may get to a point if you've had that contingency in place for 30 days buyer's home hasn't sold yet seller's still trying to sell it and, and a buyer comes along and says, I love your home, but I'll offer you a 25, 30, 40 grand less, but I can close in 30 days. I have no home sale contingency. I've already sold my house. I'm renting. I have money in the bank. Now that seller needs to make a decision because if you're, if you're not selling your house, they may say, you know what, as much as I want that higher offer that you're offering me, I also want to move on with my life. So I'm willing to entertain this lower offer. And now I'm coming back to buyer one. Your house hasn't sold. You have to make a decision. Do you want to buy my house and move forward? Or do you need to back out of the deal? Mm -hmm. Now, with the kickout clause in place, typically we put in language that if buyer one is walking away, they are retaining their deposit. Right. So they're not out the deposit. Typically, the only money they're out is if they've done a home inspection and if they've had legal fees for a purchase and sale. So there's risk, but not an outsized risk. Because, you know, between legal and home inspection, say you're out $1,500. Mm -hmm. um, but that buyer, and, and, and it's heartbreaking. I I would I would hate, because Joanne and I have been in both sides, right? We've been the seller's agent that's had to kick people out. And we've been a buyer agent where you've gotten kicked out of the deal. It, it's heartbreaking, but it's part of life and it's part of the transaction. Um, so that's, that's a, just an important piece. But it can protect a seller because if they end up, because most frequently where we see these contingencies is when 
you have a house that's not selling. So both parties have houses that aren't selling. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're willing to take these contingencies. And then the buyer gets into a jam and then, and then maybe they can't drop the price because they need the money to buy the property. And, and so these deals can be complex and they can be complicated. But, well, um, one, but one, one thing that I do feel is advantageous about, about these contingencies is that when you accept an offer with a kickout clause, whether you're a buyer or you're a seller, you are bo both parties are solving a problem. That right. They so the buyer is securing a home that they feel really excited about yep. and the seller is securing a buyer that they feel will make good on the transaction. Right. And again, we've talked a million times about how important background information is yes. when, including in, when you're including contingencies like this. So if the seller says, <laughs> I know you're going to price your property correctly, it should sell, you know, all of these things are looked at and then you take on a level of risk. Right. But communication and information is the key to success in real estate. Right. And it's not about keeping, you know, contingencies vague so that right. you can protect your client. Being crystal clear about what your intentions are are the best way to get to the finish line. Yeah. And it, and it just, and I think sometimes from us, if I'm putting my seller's hat on, mm -hmm. sometimes putting that kickout clause in place can keep a buyer honest yeah. because you know so so commonly you joanne and i do this very thorough comparative market analysis for a seller and we say you know the market suggests your house should be between you know 525 and 550 and then all of a sudden sudden the seller the seller who's also the buyer has this great home under contract but maybe they paid a little bit more for it and now they're like i want to try and recoup some of my money so i want to put the house on the market for 575 you know, if they just have a standard home sale contingency with say 60 days to sell their home, they may be inclined to do that. But if the seller has said, listen, you have a 48 hour first right of refusal, you know, for that new prospective buyer, every day that home stays in the MLS is an opportunity for another buyer to come along. And in our experience may incentivize them to price the home more appropriately. So yes. it can be a very powerful tool for a seller's agent to implement. And it's important for sellers and agents to know that these tools exist because, right. you know, markets are constantly changing and we may come into markets where these deals are common and we need to know how to finesse and to be able to put a deal together. Yeah. And I think the common denominator here is, is if you have a house to sell and you'd like to purchase another one and you have to sell the house in order to purchase, your best bet is to have your house ready to go oh, yes. on to the MLS at any moment. So that means decluttering, staging, preparing, signing a listing contract with, with the realtor of your choice. And then when you go out and you find that dream home that gets you excited, you have already prepared everything on the backside to get right. your house on the market. So right. the, the pictures should be done. Even if it takes six months to find a to to find the property of your dreams and you and your you know draft listing is sitting in the backside of the MLS, you are ready. You have something to show the listing agent on your dream home that you're ready and serious about selling your house, and that is going to mitigate some of the risk. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, this was just a great, I think that's a great topic. I think this is something that consumers, both sellers and buyers should know about in the real estate transaction. And and, and I just want to thank people for coming to Coffee with Tom and Joanne so that we can elevate and ex educate you on this process. So I'm Tom Matthews. And I'm Joanne Toronto. Cheers.